Good Packer Nation Wednesday morning, everybody. Um, yeah, jump on. Let's have some Packer talk. I know there are some folks out there that are happy about the Packers, not just beating, but as I titled the show, I think it's appropriate to say kicking the cuss out of the Seattle Seahawks. I mean, they took these boys to task. Um, so, yeah, it is a great time in Packer Nation right now. Packers with a chance to get back into the playoffs. I'm going to adjust my microphone just or my camera here just for a second. Packers with a chance now to get into the playoffs. Of course, we still want those Detroit Lions to drop one, uh, which looks like a very good possibility to me. Um, we will see how that turns out. I think the I think the I think the uh, Detroit Lions are going to drop one here. I mean, we talked about that about three or four weeks ago. How tough their road to the playoffs is, and how much different it was than the Packers, and how much more difficult it's going to be for them. So. Let me just fix this really quick. All right, well, who's out there? I see Sean is here. Hey there, buddy. How you doing? I am, uh, I, having been gone, I, um, I got back to everything back together, got a new setup to sort of new way to put the camera on the tripod and uh, was missing my, it's like been a nightmare so far today, so I am not in. But Sean is here, uh, says great game to be at, absolutely sure was. Uh, Sean Morton here as well from Florida. The probably the only warm state in the nation right now. Keegan and Tammy are here as well. Laura uh, says it's a beautiful day in the Packerhood, which is absolutely true. I completely agree. Sherry says good morning to everybody, as does Mike. Yeah, man, what a trip. I mean, I got to tell you, and there are so many people to thank because a trip like that, going to Lambeau to see the Seahawks, number one, looking back, I was talking to Jonah about it. You know, had you asked me three or four weeks ago if I had picked the right game to go to see at Lambeau, I would have said, listen, I'll see any game at Lambeau. Uh, but I would not have thought that this was going to be a win necessarily, and I would certainly not have thought it was going to be a win in the manner that the Packers did it. It was at an absolute drubbing. I mean, we took them to the woodshed. How good does it feel, Packer Nation? Yolanda, Ronnie, Maurice, Kirk, and Mark, how good does it feel right now? And the Packers now with this NFC North run that we have had our eyes on since very early in the season and how important we know it is go was going to be, and now it is all coming in the sharp focus. Of course, the Detroit Lions didn't do us any favors. However, the Packers can keep their hand on the wheel and hope with the Lions now. Let's look at the schedule. Why not? With the Lions have to, uh, can, their, their road is tough. It's a tough, tough road. Giants are a trending team, man. Those guys, they just got done beating the Cowboys. Well, then the D Detroit Lions got to turn around and play the Cowboys anyway. Very difficult two games and then they face the Packers. Now, I'm going to ask a question that I asked. I was just going to have, let's just emoji me your response now. Because I asked this question a long time ago, and the response was probably completely different than I'll get today. But how does everybody out there right now feel about the Packers' chances of making the playoffs? Why don't you just emoji me your response? Emoji me your thoughts. Let's get it out on the table. How do you feel now, as opposed to three weeks ago, about the Packers' chances of getting into the playoffs. Brian, Jerry is here. Brad, Mike, and Todd as well. Says have to beat the Bears, and we'll be talking about that real, real quick. But I see a lot of people seem to have a feeling that this Packers team right now, with Aaron Rodgers heading up the offense, with uh, a running situation that is starting to be, it's starting to settle out a little bit. We'll talk about that probably later in the show as well. Morning, Robert, Jeremy, Lauren, Royal. Um, and the defense that turned in a showing, unlike anything we have seen all season. Hit that heart button right now. Mash that heart button right now. If you, We've talked about it for all year that the Packers needed a marquee win. Go ahead and hit that heart button if you believe right now, because I know that there is no arguing against it. This was the Packers' marquee win. We have been waiting and waiting and waiting for this kind of a win, for this kind of a performance. And who better to get? And the thing we were, I know we were still a little hesitant about was, can this Packers team perform against a team that is good, a good team? A team without a lot of major flaws. 
You look at the Seahawks, and yeah, you could, you know their offensive line is suspect, but this is a good team. This is a perennial lately perennial playoff team, Super Bowl winning team, Super Bowl uh, quarterback, top ten defense, top defense in the league for points scored against. And I get bet I bet I can get a few hearts for the Packers. Practically, if Mason Crosby had put that through the field, Jonah was mentioning this. We would have dropped a 40-burger on the top-ranked points defense, the Seattle Seahawks, last Sunday if Mason Crosby had made that field goal. And I got no hate toward Mason Crosby in it. But what I do have is a lot of love for the Green Bay Packers and Aaron Rodgers and Ty Montgomery and Jordy Nelson and Devontae Adams, like, third down and two on the first series. Hello, fast start. And never taking their foot on the, off the gas. They looked a little bit like they were going to kind of take their foot off the gas. What, what they did, you know, you come into the third quarter and it looked like they were going to take their foot off the gas. Because I think they were, what they were doing is trying to just sort of prod the running game and see what they had. And they didn't really have anything for a series there. And then they just went right back to scoring touchdowns, folks. Uh, with, even with Brett Hundley in the field, on the field and in the game. How about Jeff Janis, Jet Sweep Janis? I am loving it. And this is what I said. This is the advantage I thought we had, regardless of the weather. The Packers, we don't have Eddie Lacy, no. We don't have a, 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 a bell cow back, but what we have is this. And I think maybe some people are a little bit happy about this now. That's what I mentioned, Tyler. How about that Jet Sweep? Heck yeah. The Janus jet sweep, and he turned on the Jets, too. Turning into a touchdown. But how about this Packers running game that involves no superstars? Okay? And now Aaron Rodgers, who can't even run the ball. But he's, he is one that, if he, if he can get healthy, which I'm afraid he's not going to be able to. We'll talk about that. But if he could get healthy, he's a, he can attack in the run as well. But uh, we now have a starter, Ty Montgomery. How about Ty Montgomery? We got Ty Montgomery, who is an ex-wide ex receiver. I don't know what you call him at this point. But he's now officially listed as a running back. And Montgomery just couldn't be happier. This guy, he's so quiet. But you can tell he is absolutely loving playing the game of football right now. And he, he's, he's like totally deadpan. But he is loving it. And Maurice is asking about Eddie Lacy. Should we keep him at the, you know, this is a contract year for him. And I've, I've, I've suggested that we may never see Eddie Lacy uh, put on the green and gold again. I, I hope it does happen. Here's what I, I mean, if I was just going to lay it out on the table, because Eddie Lacy was playing some good football. I hope Eddie Lacy gets, gets a contract that both the Packers and he can, can deal with. I hope he stays in shape. And I hope he and Chris and Michael become sort of a thunder and lightning. And then you add Ty Montgomery into that mix. Now you've got a, what I'm, I'm going to call a three-headed monster. But back to my point, the Packers already have a three-headed monster, guys. Aaron Ripkowski, Ty Montgomery, and Chris and Michael. Now I know he made a mistake or two. Actually, what it sounds like is it was not a mistake that he didn't know the playbook but just that he didn't pick up the communication, the transition at the line of scrimmage, the pre-snap, he just either didn't hear it or, or he couldn't quite process it in time. And now he's got another week. He's going to be just fine. But when he carried the ball, he did something James Starks ain't going to do. We know that. We now have a three-headed monster in the offensive backfield of the Green Bay Packers. Think about that for a second. For years, what has this offense been about? It's been the arm of Aaron Rodgers and a fantastic uh, core of wide receivers. And now we have a three-headed... Now And then, oh yeah, it was great because you need to run the ball. We've said that since the beginning. There were people that thought we didn't need to run the ball. We could just throw it. No. You need to be able to run the ball. And then Eddie Lacy came on the scene and we could suddenly run the ball. It was fantastic. But in the, I, and I'm going to stop for a second because I just want to tell you, if I had, and you guys can, you guys can comment your thoughts, emoji me, your response, whatever you want to do. If I had a chance to ask Mike McCarthy one question right now, that question would be, 
be, and it'd be hard to phrase it where it doesn't sound bad, okay? But to put it simply, I would ask him, I'd say, Coach McCarthy, is there a, a sense in which your team is better off due to the fact that both Eddie Lacy and James Starks went down at the same time? Is there a sense in which this team got better because we lost both of our starting running backs? Let me ask you this. Anybody out there think that Ty Montgomery would be running the ball for the Green Bay Packers had not James Starks and Eddie Lacy gotten hurt at the same time and had to be out for extended time? Ty Montgomery would never have seen us. He would have done that little the thing that Randall Cobb does from time to time, I know. But he would not have been discovered as a running back, and that is what he is right now. And Jeff says, uh, Lacey's regressed every season. I disagree. I think Lacey was having a fantastic season this year. And did you see him against the Cowboys? He regressed last season. He was much better this year, I think. I don't know what everybody else out there thinks. But I got nothing against the way Eddie Lacey was playing, especially when he was hurt. He played until he basically had to have surgery. He was the best offense player in the game that game against the Cowboys. So he had a regression, but I do not agree that he's regressed every year. Um, is there a scenario where we went out and not make the playoffs? Yeah, if the Lions keep keep winning, and uh, and then it would depend on the wild card schedule. But yeah, we're hard after this NFC North. That's the way we want to do it. We've got kind of other, if you know, as soon as we see these Detroit Lions drop one, and they're going to drop one, guys. It, does it, I mean, okay, seriously, it, can I get a laugh uh, on this fact that the freaking Detroit Lions leading the NFC North had to come down to Matthew Stafford running the ball in, they were in position maybe to tie the game, but Matthew Stafford has to have this crazy play and run into the end zone for the, for the Lions to beat the Bears? I mean, you ain't going to be writing home to mama about beating the Bears in the end of the game and my quarterback had to run it in. Oh, my gosh. Now, guess what, Lions? You got that nice, that amazing emotional high of the last-minute win. Well, guess who's breathing down your neck right now? It's the, it's the Giants and the Cowboys and the Packers. Get ready to go 0-3, ladies and gentlemen. Lions could very well, well drop each of the last, last ones. And uh, they have been eking out wins, yes. But they are not going to win out. They are not going to win out. Now, if they drop two, the Packers can lose to them last game of the season because we got, you know, we wouldn't have a tie at that point. But we don't want that, of course. Uh, you know, I, I think that everybody out there probably has a notion that. The game week 17 against the Detroit Lions in Detroit, anybody got a notion that it is not going to quite look like the, the fail Mary or the Hail Mary game, the miracle in Motor City, where we played an absolutely atrocious first half and it came down to Richard Rodgers with a fantastic play. But with, we, we never scored a touchdown with time on the clock. For crying out loud, we finally, we, you know, it's not going to be that way, I don't think. And apparently Packer Nation agrees with me on that one because, I mean, you know, and we all remember, the Packers are going to remember what it took to get, to get that win last year. And they're going to remember how poorly they played. Tyler Zakin, will AD uh, be a factor on Christmas Eve? I, here's the, okay, all right, let's talk about the Vikings, okay? Vikings have to play the Colts. They could easily lose to the Colts, guys, right? Then they play us, okay? Now, we said when we were talking about the stretch run for all of the NFC North teams, we mentioned that the Vikings have probably the easiest one. They got the Colts, they got us, and then they got the Bears, you know, and us, of course, being the toughest challenge that they'll have, even though that said, Colts beat the Packers a little bit ago, and I see Andrew Luck throwing all over the Vikings, now, the question was, is uh, uh, Adrian Peterson uh, going to be a difference maker at this point? And, I was and, and it's a great question. I appreciate it because, honestly, I was thinking about this earlier this week. And here's my thought. 
Uh, my thought is, I don't think it makes a bit of difference whether Adrian Peterson comes back to this team or not. I don't think they have a chance with him. I don't think they have a chance without him. I don't think they have a chance under any circumstance at this point. And I think the team knows it. Listen, these guys weren't, Adrian Peterson wasn't himself before he got hurt. He ain't going to be himself after. Yeah, it's not like he's some you know, miracle wand of surgery. He's going to make him faster, better. Packers took care of business on Adrian Peterson. And the Vikings, recall, how many points did the Vikings score against Packers? I know it was a loss, and it was really a hard one to take, right? Because, again, that would have been a great marquee win and would have, you know, to kick off the season. It would have been awesome. It didn't happen. But how many points did the Vikings score on us? The Vikings scored 17 points on our defense. The problem wasn't our defense. The problem was that was the game our offense just couldn't quite get it together. Gary agrees with me. The, you know, AD's not going to be the spark that the Vikings need. Oop. And I just spilled my coffee on myself, which is fine. We can live with that. Uh, Packers played in the snow. You know, I can play in the coffee. All right. But yeah, AD is not going to make a difference. I, I, bring him back. Frankly, I, I think, honestly, I think Adrian Peterson not playing as well, especially early on. And then he got hurt. I don't remember when he got hurt. Um, but I think AD not playing well. He was, wasn't himself. I think that was actually a benefit to the, to the Vikings organization early on. The reason being, they had to lean on Bradford and look at what he did against the Packers. He had a couple beautiful passes. And it was really, and Bradford was the spark that the Vikings needed. Well, now that, the, that, sort, that flame has blown out. They don't have that. Uh, I guess you could argue that AD coming back might be that spark, but I don't think so. Not, I agree with Gary. I don't think so. So, great question. Um, and it seems like most people agree. I don't, th- I don't care if the, pack, or the Vikings have Adrian Peterson or not. When they come to Lambeau, they are about to get taken to the woodshed as far as I'm concerned. And this Packers team is, they are primed to take some people to the woodshed. Because as we said all year, all it really, at least I did, I know there were some that disagreed with me on this. There were some, that, and I heard this again and again and again for a while there, that the Packers don't have any good players. And that's why we're losing. We don't have any good players. Are you kidding me? So my thoughts were, listen, this, the Packers have the players they need. You look at this list. The problem was injuries for a while there. Now we're getting a little bit healthy. Any, any love for that right now? Getting a little bit healthy. Uh, of course, the question was asked about uh, Jared Cook. Um, anybody got any hate for these freaking refs not calling the pass interference on Jared Cook out there? That was so obvious. He's singled up. He gets smacked in the face a couple times. He ends up, And then he ends up injuring his chest. And to answer the question, there hasn't been much information on what is really going on with Jared Cook. However, Packers brought in a defensive lineman. They brought in a linebacker, I believe, but they didn't bring in, you know, they're, they're taught, they were, uh, uh, um, Elliot Wolf was seen, I almost said Ron Wolf. Elliot Wolf was seen talking to the practice squad tight end after the game in the locker room. So, of course, then, all of the conversation, all the discussion, all the gossip goes to, is Jared Cook going to be okay? Uh, And Brandon says, terrible no call. Yeah, you could see. All right, guys, this is one thing. I found that going to the game, this is what really struck me about this game, is if I had watched this game, the Seattle Seahawks against the Packers on TV, I would not have quite gotten the same sense. Uh, Billy saying lung contusion. Um, I would not have gotten the same sense of just how dirty a team the Seattle Seahawks are. Seattle, Seattle Seahawks fan, those of you that jumped on before, we had some Seattle Seahawks fans on before the show saying, go Hawks, you know, whatever, that's fine. But let me tell you something, having watched your team out there, Hawks fans, you should be ashamed of your team. Does anybody else out there see this? I mean, this was from start to finish in this game. So it wasn't because the score was out of hand and, you know, a temper's flare. It was from the beginning of this game until the very last play. A cheap shot on victory formation? Really? Seahawks fans, you should be ashamed of your team. Not just for how they played against the Packers. I mean, because, frankly, they could have played a better game. We still were going to kick your butts anyway. But you should be ashamed of your team. You're a bunch of cheap shot artists. 
Richard Sherman out there against Devontae Adams, just freaking blasting him from behind. And then what I love is Devontae Adams in the run with, I, don't, I guess it was the Ty Montgomery run or it was the jet sweep maybe. And Ty Montgomery is out there lead, lead blocking. He's out blocking in open space. And guess who he's blocking? Richard Sherman. And guess the position Richard Sherman was taken after Devontae Adams cleanly blocked him. Face down in the Lambeau Field turf, right where you belong, Richard Sherman. Because frankly, right now, I saw you on the field, and as far as I'm concerned, you ain't nothing but a talker and a cheap shot artist. So you did add something to your resume and your repertoire. It probably wasn't added. It's been there the whole time, but, but we finally saw it firsthand. You are a talker. Yes, no, no disagreement there. You are a cheap shot artist. There is no, dis, there is no stance to disagree. Are you a player? Well, eh, eh. all right, well, let's do, um, geez, there's not even a love it or leave it to be done. I mean, other than, okay, we could leave the refs in this game. Uh, there was some really terrible stuff out there. I mean, and frankly, the refs did everything they could to keep the Packers out of this game. And every time they screwed it up, Morgan Burnett would turn around, and make an interception anyway, and give us the ball back. So nice try, refs. Whatever mob boss was calling you uh, down into your headset down there to make sure that the Seahawks won this game, it didn't work, okay? Um, I jest. But I did think it was funny that every time the freaking refs had a crappy call that ended up, and the Seahawks ended up getting the ball back, we just turned it over anyway, all right? This was freaking awesome, okay? Uh... All right, um, here's the thing, guys. Um, I don't know what, if you guys have been watching in your living room, if you just, like, I usually just sort of kick back in my chair. I have my spot that I sit in. Um, but uh, in the stands, the looks on all of our faces, and I'm talking about the five interceptions and finishing the game with a fumble recovery so we could go into victory formation immediately after that fumble recovery. The perfect... Devonte Adams touchdown catch and the I think it was Rawls maybe it wasn't Rawls at that point uh, fumble recovery to go to victory formation was the perfect bookend to a perfect game against the Seattle Seahawks. I mean it doesn't get closer to to perfect than what we saw. I mean, and uh, it was perfect because. The Packers needed it. This is our marquee win. We needed this one, and we saw in the last few games. You saw rumblings of it, right? You saw the, the offense starting to turn around, but we were still a little hesitant. You saw the defense starting to hold teams in that 13-point range. Uh, of course, nobody expected this turn. And that's one thing I don't think anyone could have predicted was 38-10. to 10. Uh, And frankly, the 7-point the by uh, the old ex-Badger, Tanner McAvoy, was garbage time anyway. This basically was a 41 to 3 game. You know, if you, it was this close, like inches, you know. Nobody had predicted that, that I know of. If you did, jump on and say, I predicted multiple turnovers and 38 plus, 38 to, you know, barely double digits. Um, Tommy says, My cheeks were hurting from cheesing too much. <laughs> Exactly. Well, here's the thing. All right. So just, if, you know, I, I happen to be at this game by the time like interception, you know, and the, it was like the Seahawks had started a volleyball team out there. All of their wide receivers were just setting the ball to Packers at, at some point in this game. But all of the, every time an interception would come up, the first reaction was like, and then look at somebody else and they're going, did I just see this? And then it's like, yeah, <laughs> it was craziness after a while. I think I might have mentioned during the, you know, I went live a couple times just because it was so cool to be out there and people started throwing the snow. There were snow spouts just randomly popping out, probably indicative of people going to jail, each and every one of them. I don't know, but it was so cool. But I think I mentioned, you know, Am I really seeing this? I mean, that is what I've, I kind of got to the point where, am I really seeing this? 
And then you just got to roll with it because the Packers just kept them coming, right? However, on a serious note, did we, did not anybody else out there hear the coaches say, Dom Capers in particular, something that he's said again and again and again, this Packers defense uh, oftentimes and in the past when it's been successful or at its most successful has been when it has won the turnover margin. We hadn't seen that in the year. And Dom Capers often says, you know, these turnovers, and you can say it with me, these turnovers, they come in bunches, right? We saw one a couple games back. Last week, we saw another one. And then this was the game where they started coming in bunches. Hopefully, we, um, we can continue that trend because it's a great trend. And I saw the question asked, do you think we'll see him again in the playoffs? And that's a great question. Um, and and I, I, was, I was actually thinking about that on the way back. Um, and I think it is a possibility. Um, and the, que- you know, the, the real question to me is, you know, should we fear these guys if we see them in the playoffs? You know, because the environment, um, is, it's not, prob- not going to be at Lambeau Field, most likely, um, because their record, again, I think they still have like two more wins than us. Um, but, you know, the weather at Lambeau Field was not a factor in this game. I mean, if any Seahawks fan or player makes any excuse about the weather in this game, weather was perfectly fine. In fact, the Packers were hoping for more snow. There wasn't any snow on the field. It was dry as far as we could tell for the most part. Uh, and there were, there were no excuses. So that said, I feel like this Packers team can beat the Seahawks. I don't care where we land. Now, if we end up playing, you know, you got the 12th man. What a freaking joke. Packers fans are just as good, just as loud. We're smarter than the Seahawks fans. However, our team doesn't actually need us to win games because we're you know, champions anyway. You know, how about back in the day when there were not enough stadium seats for fans to make any noise? Were the Seahawks winning any games? No, the Seahawks didn't even exist while we were winning championships. So go ahead, build your stadiums. And same thing with the fight. Build your stadiums so that the uh, crowd noise is to your benefit, whatever. Okay, if that's how you have to win, I feel sorry for you, I gotta say. Okay. Virginia says we travel better. Oh, heck yeah, we do. Us and the Steelers, I think, you know, there's just no comparison. And Corey's saying the same thing. We go everywhere, too. You know, even games away feel like home games. Don't you love it as a Packer fan when you can – you're, I'm sitting in my living room watching the game, like at Atlanta. And when the Packers score or something, you just, it's like – it's as if Atlanta scored. Like you hear the noise on camera. It's awesome. Yes, Green Bay is called Title Town for a reason. Good point. Um, all right, well, folks, uh, this team has, you know, we've still got some tough games. There's no doubt about it. We've got, you know, we were unable to handle the Vikings last time around. Uh, I think that if there was a, a best spot that I would like to see the Packers play the Bears in this stretch, it is this game right here. Because if we had gone and we had to come back and play Detroit at Detroit after having this big emotional win against the Seahawks, I would be worried about a little bit of a letdown. Against the Bears, we travel. uh, But against the Bears, I feel confident. I want to tell you now, and you guys who watch the show, you know who Sherm the Creepy Caddy is, our good luck charm. Many of you have seen Sherm the Creepy Caddy. I've brought him on the show. Um... If uh, I'll get to, ooh, I got a good question. Info on twelve uh, that Vanessa's asking. I'm gonna try to try to catch up with that. Um, but Sherm the creepy caddy, we 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 bring. This is the first time Sherm has ever been to Lambeau Field or been to Green Bay area. And we go to the game, and we kick the snot out of a team that a lot of people predicted us to lose against, including my buddy Rick Motti, If you're out there, I think. I believe you predicted the Packers to lose 27 to 24 Seahawks, if I'm remembering right. But it's been a long time, so I could be wrong. So what I'm saying is, I think that I am a, we are a good luck charm. Sherm, myself, Jonah, Garth, my buddy, the cigar soldier, Kalen, his wife. It was good that we had Kalen there because there was at least a little bit of beauty in the, the, the crew. Otherwise, it was just a really dog, ugly bunch of people, bunch of guys. You know, but I think we're good luck. So with that said, now let me explain this and you guys will understand as a Packer fan. Well, as all NFL fans do this kind of stuff, right? So we're traveling from my sister's house. Thanks a lot, Mitzi, for letting me stay there. 
to um, in Sheboygan, you know, back here in Tennessee. So the route either you either take you know 290 around Chicago, or you go right through the on the Skyway. I love doing the Skyway. I hate it when it's there's traffic. But we were going late enough, and halfway there, we were kind of trying to make the decision: Are we gonna which which route are we gonna take? And then it dawned on me: Let's drive Sherm the creepy caddy right down the middle of Chicago. So we did our part. We got on the horse and we drove Sherm the creepy caddy right down the middle of Chicago. We didn't go around. So I am predicting a big Packer win against the Bears. Sean says, you need to go to the rest of the games. Hey, just send me the tickets. I'll find a way. I will walk. Uh, Thanks to my brother. My brother lent me his car because, you know, renting a car is, it's craziness. Crazy expensive. Um... But yeah, I mean, I, I'm, 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 I'm ready to travel. I'm ready to travel. Um, yeah, it, it was a magical game. I can't think of a better game. And I, I think I mentioned this to Jonah. I was like, you know, uh, about a month ago, if, if we had, you know, somebody had said, you know, which game would you have wanted to pick? It would have been a tough choice, but one of the choices I probably wouldn't have made was to go to the Seahawks game. I'd have been thinking, oh, man, we're, you know... Offense is stalling out. Defense is just giving up too many points. Uh, but then I went to the game and uh, hopefully, hopefully, helped them out. But me, Garth, Kalen, Jonah, we were screaming. My voice still isn't back. You may hear it a little bit. The question was asked about Aaron Rodgers and the thing, guys. I'm going to, and, and I'm not, you know, obviously my opinion means less than nothing, frankly. However, I'm worried that Aaron Rodgers is never going to be 100 percent by the end of the by the time this season ends. At whatever point that ends up being, the uh, you know he had the hamstring issue, um, was you know nursing that a little bit, and then it was the calf that in, on the third and two play to Devontae Adams, he pulled his calf. He was noticeably limping, um, and I you know these are the kind of injuries you you can't, it's hard to stay off of. These are these, you know, the hammy. You know, we talked about it. Same thing with Clay Matthews. It's so hard to stay off them that what happens is they tend to be these nagging injuries. However, I am starting to develop a theory right now, folks. And that theory is that Aaron Rodgers is a better quarterback when his mobility is taken away from him than he is when he's mobile. And obviously, I would love to have Aaron Rodgers mobile rather than, you know, hurt, injured. However... When, when Aaron Rodgers is perfectly healthy, he tends to lean on his legs. <clears throat> number one, to buy him, excuse me, <clears throat> number one, to buy him way too much time. <clears throat> Might have a cold coming on, I'm afraid. It's not from the cold weather. Um, I got to get a drink. Um, he holds the ball too long, I think, when he relies on his legs. We love it when he can run for a first down, though. <clears throat> Um, but when Aaron Rodgers just sort of stays put and is paying attention to the wide receivers, um, yes, he's dangerous when he extends the plays. There's no doubt about that. However, if anybody else out there, you know, I'm sure somebody else out there noticed because you've been doing the same thing as me. When Aaron Rodgers holds the ball for seven yards, you might as well throw it away. It's not going to be a completion. When Aaron Rodgers holds the ball for around three seconds, as opposed to that seven seconds, he is surgical. So yeah, I want Aaron Rodgers to be healthy, but I want Aaron Rodgers to play the way he's been playing the last th- three weeks. Look at it. Same thing in the Minnesota Viking game. You guys remember. <clears throat> and yeah, it's great that he can... I, I give credit to the offensive line that he can hold, hold the ball that long. I give credit to Aaron that he has the kind of pocket presence. He doesn't go down easily that way. But he just is more surgical when he gets the ball out quicker. Remember the calf injury, guys? How good was Aaron Rodgers with that calf injury? Especially when he came back on the field against Detroit. We were losing to Detroit at that point. And uh, to have Aaron Rodgers have, you know, the only for a long time rushing touchdowns on this team, that's a travesty. Let's let our running backs do that job. And speaking of running backs, I think Kristen Michael's going to be the real deal, guys. I think a lot of the credit's going to have to go to our offensive line. Getting to anybody, okay, who's got some love? We, you, I almost overlooked that. Who has got some love for TJ Lang, the warrior, coming back, 
getting into this game and playing some lights out football, this offensive line is back in form. And if TJ, I hope you get healthy, brother, man, because we need you. And that's no disservice to Jason Spriggs. I appreciate what he did, but he's no TJ Lang. And I mean, David, we, we went through the list. You know, David Bakhtiari, who is playing Pro Bowl quality left tackle. Lane Taylor, who was a big question mark. You know, the, the coaches believed in him. They saw him practice. We were kind of pissed off because we let go of a Pro Bowler. But Taylor, under that kind of pressure, Lane Taylor has done a great job. Corey Lindsley come in because J.C. Treader is hurt. Doing a fantastic job. He's not a world beater out there, but he's doing a great, great job. And then TJ comes back and gets added to the tandem with Brian Bulaga. And I'm knocking on wood because I don't want to jinx him. When that cat is healthy... He's as good a tackle. I take him for, man, I, will, I love Brian Bulaga. You know, the trouble has been he's just had a lot of injuries. When he's in there, when this offensive line, and we talked about this since training camp. It's part of the reason Eddie Lacy was having such a great year before he got hurt. <clears throat> I am loving me some, all right. Yeah, there's so many. I was going to do stats. So let's just, I mean, it's the show is already getting long, but I, There is enough stuff to say about this. You know, you got Morgan Burnett getting the uh, interception. Micah Hyde. Randall with two. Uh, Rollins with one. Who am I missing back there? The only one that didn't get one was Ha Ha Clinton Dix. And I was calling him out, man. Come on, man. Keep those interceptions coming. Well, Ha Ha -ha didn't get one. And everybody else did. I mean, that's fantastic. And Ha Ha had a good game. I am loving Ha Ha Clinton Dix, guys. I know you do, too. But watching him on the field at the game, haha ha is the spark plug on this defense, man. And it's not that he's hyper. It's just that he's smiling and celebrating with everybody. He got caught. He got flagged because he had his helmet off. He's out there with Jeff Janis in garbage time. Just freaking high five it and getting everybody pumped up. I, I mean, you know, you know, the, the position I played long ago for a short period of time probably as long, longer than it needed to be, but was safety. And I love good safety play and ha ha Clinton Dix, man. This team, we talked about this guys. Think about it. Remember, recall, think back. We're not there yet. We've got a lot of work still to do, but it looks like this Packers team can finish in grand style and possibly do a little something in the playoffs. Playoffs. I give the, and, and Aaron Rodgers said this, I, the, I guess the question was asked, I, don't, I didn't hear the actual question in the press conference, you know, what do you think your chances of making the playoffs are? And his response was, you know, I, I forget now what his exact response was, but good to great or something like that for his chances. And Aaron Rodgers, this is what we, I mentioned this about this team. Um, and actually I wanted to ask uh, Wayne Larravee, we didn't end up, we ended up missing each other, but uh I wanted to ask Wayne, you know, do you, you know, because uh, in Wayne's book, he quotes Ted Thompson as saying, you know, uh, good, there's a bond with the good teams. There's a bond with the good teams and that's what makes them good. And uh, I wanted to ask Wayne, you know, do you think, because that's one thing that no one in Packer Nation, I know there's a bunch of you out there. There are very few people who did not jump off the bandwagon at some point, you know, we were not playing well for a while. But the one thing that can be said about this Packers team from the coaching staff on down was they have a bond. They never once, they never once broke down. There was never a breakdown in the locker room. Yes, they had to get some things fixed. But this team does have a bond. And if, if Thompson is right, there's a bond with good teams, he said. It's what makes them good. And if Thompson is right, and again, Thompson won a Super Bowl too. If he's right... Our chances are, we're still in this one, folks. We are still in this one. So I think we're in this one. I think the Packers, I think the Detroit Lions are easily going to drop two. Uh, And and one of those hopefully is to us. But if they drop two and one of them isn't to us, I think we still, you know, we would split then in the division. And uh, I'm not able to think of what the record exactly would be, but I think we'd be in my one game at that point. Um... You know, assuming we do our business. So our business starts 
with the Chicago Bears. And uh, we will start. I'll, I have to start talking about that tomorrow. There was just too much to say about the Green Bay Packers versus the Seahawks game. When you talk about a marquee game, you talk about a, you know, a state in a game. Talk about a game in which not only do you beat a good team, but you show a good team the door. And we showed the Seattle Seahawks the door. Those guys were just huddling over their heaters, waiting to go get a shower. And they did everything they could. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I like Russell Wilson, but he, and he didn't have a great game by any stretch. He was off. Uh, he's the one that was hoping it was, said he hoped it would snow. Well, maybe the snow would have made him throw better because he didn't throw very well. And Roger says, never say die. Sharon says, one game at a time. Let's go Packers. Exactly, okay? So we got this one behind us, you know, and you can't dwell on it. You can't rest in your laurels. <clears throat> we still have to go out and beat the Bears. My buddy, uh, Dale got on when I, I threw up a picture on my personal Facebook uh, fan or account uh, of us at the game, and he, he, he said, go Bears on there. And then I said, I said, yeah, I think we got these Bears. So we'll see. We will see. Tom is calling it an in-your-face game, um, and I agree. It absolutely was. Because, listen, isn't this one of the things that – were you a little nervous about this game? Partly because – Every time we play the Seahawks, something goofy happens, and it's never in our favor? Fail Mary, freaking onside kick that should easily have been caught, and we should have gone to the Super Bowl, period. We were the better team against the Seahawks. Absolutely the better team. That's why they play, call it a game, because sometimes the better team loses, and we were the better team. Any Seahawks fan that watches that game and thinks otherwise um, is either blind or stupid, one or the other. All right. Atreyu says this was our statement game. I want to say hi to you. I think Atreyu was there. Chuck. Um, let's see. Bob. I mean, so many people were like pulling me aside. Most of you had had a few beers, I must say. Um, pulling me aside and saying hi. I appreciate all you guys. It was great to meet you guys. Um, we're going we're gonna to have to do this again sometime. Even if I don't have tickets to the game, we got to go out, hang out, get a table, uh, do a little Packer talk, you know. Roger says we're still the better team. Agreed. And we proved it, which is nice. You know, it was nice. Nothing screwy happened except we just gave them a drubbing. But, yeah, it was so fantastic to see everybody. And uh, my appreciation to uh, everybody from Mammy K, my brother, uh, Mitzi and Chad. Uh, it was great to see you guys. Chuck, uh, Trey, you, um, everybody, Garth and Kalen. What a fantastic trip. What a fantastic game. Um, I couldn't think of a better way, and Tom Adams got spotted cow for the win. He has become, uh, Tom, if I remember right, he lives in uh, Florida and got himself into some new Glarus and now has become a spotted cow fan, which is a good thing to be, right? Um, I know a lot of you guys know new Glarus uh, or been there probably through the tour, et cetera, et cetera. Jacob going to be, Jacob is going to the game next season, first game. All right, Jacob, you hang in with the show because we need to talk to you before you go to that game, right? All right. Kevin says, go pack, be safe. <laughs> Garth says, and you got to shovel snow. We came home, and I don't, and it was funny, because Gar Garth, I mean, it, I got to get, we, Garth, I need to get you and Kalen on more than I did. I realized that looking back, like, we need to get you, because Garth is freaking funny as, he's funny as cuss, all right? And so we get home, and uh, we're s totally stoked, amped up. And but there's snow like that hasn't been snow blown. So he gets out the snow blower and starts snow blowing. And I grab a shovel. Kalen grabs a shovel. The only one not grabbing a shovel was the 20 year old sleeping inside. Hey, something not right with that. Us old fogies out there. I was breaking my back. But frankly, having lived, you know, I, I grew up in West Central Wisconsin. We heated our house with wood. So I did a lot. I've split a lot of wood. I've shoveled a lot of snow. Um, but. Uh, I miss it, you know, and that's the thing. Oh, that's what I was going to mention. Garth comes by with the snowblower. He's like, you miss this? <laughs> but the truth is when you don't have to do it every time it snows, you kind of do, you know, and we were talking, Garth and I, that the, the weather, I know those of you that were up in the area or whatever, you know, yes, the snow does cause a little bit of trouble. You don't want anybody getting hurt on the roads, but that was beautiful, beautiful weather. Like low 20s, probably in the teens, maybe after the sun went down. The snow was fairly dry, easy to remove, but it was, you know, it was just a clear night. It was nice and 
crisp. And it was one of those nights. And I asked Garth, you know, because Garth, Garth, if I'm remembering, I think he went to, I think you got a, a, a hockey scholarship for college, if I'm remembering right. I wanted to ask you about that while I was up there, whether it was you went to college on a hockey scholarship. But anyway, Garth was a big hockey player, good hockey player. I played football. My favorite way to play was out in the snow because when you, you, when you play sports and you're in that kind of weather, you can just play. You never get sweaty, maybe a little bit, but you never get overheated. It's freaking awesome. And it was gorgeous. And again, thank you so much, Garth, Kalen. It was an epic, epic trip. It was an epic game. And it could pay dividend. I mean, this is a game. Being this being the marquee game, let me give me a thumbs up right now if you can't think of a better time for the Packers to have their marquee game that we've been looking for. I mean, if you go back, maybe you know, maybe you have a great game early week two against the Vikings. By the time we get to the Seahawks, everything could be different by then. The Packers could have chosen a better day to play this game. And Garth, man, thank you so much. I, we could not have chosen a better time to be there. And like I said, we were at some point, it was like you wanted to pinch yourself. I'm at Lambeau. It, we're in the snow. The, and the Packers are taking, are taking the ball away like every other series. And Aaron Rodgers, yeah, he's hurt, but he is playing. How about anybody have any love for a 150.8 final passer rating for Aaron Rodgers? Perfect rating is like 158.4, 150.8 in this game, guys. Gary says mud games are the best. I like, I like, I think snow games are the best. Those are my favorite. But yeah, mud games are pretty awesome too. I like the snow games because you end up just wet. Um, but mud games are fun. And I remember, you know, when it get wet, you know, you get the line, you just run and slide on your pads in the in the water. Uh, 158.3 is perfect, and he had 150.8 at the end of this game. 18 for 23. This is the thing, guys. Remember back when we were throwing like 70 times a game? He was 18 of 23 and had three touchdowns. Three touchdowns, right? Yeah. No, touch, no interceptions. That's pretty freaking cool because that tells us that the running game is developing. And I will, I'm putting my foot down right now. Kristen Michael is our, I mean, well, uh, Ty Montgomery is probably going to be our starter in that sense, but Kristen Michael has taken the place of James Starks. The, the, the mistakes that he had, um, honestly, I don't think that, you know, there's been the question that whether he can learn the playbook. That's not, I don't even think that's what happened out there. I don't think he didn't know the play. I think he just didn't catch the audible. Or he you know, misinterpreted the audible. That's easily corrected stuff. Kristen Michael has just taken James Starks' place. Give me a thumbs up if you agree right now. Yes, he has to. He cannot have those kind of mistakes. Yes, he has to continue this. But he ran with a little bit of. I'll tell you the only thing I didn't like about what Kristen Michael did, aside from the mistakes, the mental error. The only thing I didn't like is he was high fiving like all the Seahawks fans when he came off the bench. Now I know there his he's got friends there and whatnot, but I was like, man, say hi to him after the game. But high five our guys, you know. Uh, you may not have caught that. It's not a big deal. But Kristen Michael. All right, we get Ty Montgomery in there. We have got Thunder and Lightning with Kristen Michael and Ty Montgomery a little bit. Uh, if not, we've got some Thunder in Aaron Ripkowski. But this Packers team in the running back situation, and again, this is the question I would ask Mike McCarthy, is explain this to me because I believe it's true. I believe that this team became better in the long run because two, our two starting running backs got hurt at the same time. We'd have never seen Ty Montgomery in the position he's in. We'd have never seen it had this not happened, guys. It's hard to go through when you go through it. And I hate it for Eddie Lacy. I hate it for James Starks, too, to be honest, because how much of the way James Starks is faltering right now has to do with the fact he's not 100% healthy. He had to go through a surgery, I believe. Um, I don't think he was, he was not doing great before the surgery either, but I hate it for those guys. But, um, but the... The thing is, we would have never got to where we are, and here we are. Now we've got a three-headed monster. So let's take this monster forward. Let's beat the, beat the Bears. Let's take care of business during, during, against the Vikings, and let's finish this season against, hopefully, a Detroit Lions team that drops at least one in the meantime. Folks, 
I'm going to let you go. I've held you over long enough. Tomorrow, maybe we'll talk a little bit about the stat. The stats sheet is just incredible on this game. Didn't get to it today. Maybe we'll talk a little bit about it tomorrow, but then it's time to move on to this Bears game and talk about how, what the Packers are going to need to do to get it done against the Bears. And uh, what mostly they're going to need to do is just keep doing what they're doing, you know. We saw this team not stall out. We saw the defense continue to hold teams to barely double digits. Let's keep that up. Let's keep it rolling. Folks, you have a great Wednesday. I will talk to you again tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll have some football at night. If you haven't got on to our FireFan League just yet, now is the time. Um, If you pre-registered, the game is available. Uh, Just download FireFan from the App Store. Uh, Put in the promo code GETTHERING. Our league right now is a temporary league, but this temporary league's last game will be this coming Thursday night because we're going to be playing for the Precious. Uh, The game is full go. Uh, We will be, uh, what I need you guys to do is start feeding me possible names for our new league to play for the Precious. What do you want me to call that league? You can throw it uh, in the comments. I'll put a, actually don't throw it in the comments here. I'll put a post up, name the league, and you guys just comment down your ideas because we are going to start playing for the Precious. It's going to be for real now. I am going to be playing as many games as I possibly can. Packers only, we don't know how many how many games the Packers are going to have. So I'm going to be playing lots of games. Get on practice on Thursday. Get your tokens ready. And let's play some Fire Fan. We've been having a blast. I hate, I missed it Monday night because my phone was just unable to connect for whatever reason. It didn't make any sense. But I wasn't able to connect and play. Uh, I think Jonah got on and played. I think some of you still played. Play it. And the other thing is, guys, start your own league. Go to, go to your workplace. Start a league with those guys. You can play two leagues. You make the, one, you make the picks for both leagues. And then when you play live, you can play live with the, still play for the Precious. And your other league can uh, play as well. So as a, as a player, you can create a league. Go ahead and do it. Um, Keegan says, I only have five. Five points or five, five tokens? Uh, Keegan. Message me. I might be able to help you out with that. Give me, send, send me a message uh, over Facebook. We'll see if we can help you out with that. All right, uh, all right, guys. Uh, have a great day. I will talk to you again soon. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for joining in and viewing when I went live as we were at Lambeau that uh, final, uh, the second to the last when the Packers went up 38 to 10. I did a quick uh, video around the stadium just showing the little the snow spouts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And that, that, uh, that video had just thousands and thousands of views and I really appreciate that Uh, so I will hope that to see you again tomorrow we're going to keep at it with this Bears game coming up and uh, so we're going to keep going live having a lot of fun with it good Packer Nation morning we'll talk to you again tomorrow go Pack